Oh, hey there. Oh, what am I reading? Thanks for asking. No, I'm not reading my article about the Koenigsegg Jesko's transmission. That'd be silly. I wrote it. I'm reading the article right next to it, where Koenigsegg, Christian von Koenigsegg, talks about what his daily driver is, a Tesla Model 3. In his words, quote, it's the best contemporary normal daily driver around. Koenigsegg says this is the best daily driver. I don't think endorsements get better than that. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we are going over a one year review of living with a Tesla Model 3. Now we're gonna go through the good as well as the bad. And as a bonding moment, let's, you know, let's hate a little bit, all right? I think together collectively, everyone enjoys hating, especially on the internet. And what greater thing to hate on than change? So that's what I want us all to bond over here for a moment. So here's the thought experiment. Let's say for the past hundred years, instead of everyone uh, driving internal combustion engines, they've been driving electric cars, and internal combustion engines have been this weird, rare, quirky thing that you hear about every now and then in the news. And then all of a sudden we introduce internal combustion engines to the masses, and now they're here today. We're excited because we get to try something different, and we've been driving these electric cars all this time. And so now we, we go out and we get one of these internal combustion engine cars, and we immediately, it's like, oh, this is different and it sucks. And so there's, there's 10 big things that I think had history been different and we started with electric cars and then suddenly got into internal combustion cars, we'd have some major, major complaints about them. And so I wanna go over 10 of those in my opinion. The first one being people would get into that combustion car and be like, yo, where's the torque? Why is this thing so slow? Because electric cars are insanely fast, especially this one right here, Tesla Model 3 Performance. You put your foot down, it is wild how quick this thing is. This thing is a $60,000 car, zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. You know what else hits zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds? An Audi R8 with a V10 engine, $200,000, zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. So the amount of performance you get out of electric cars is insane. And it's not reserved for just performance electric cars. A Nissan Leaf, bare bones Nissan Leaf, is quicker to 50 miles per hour than my old uh, supercharged Honda S2000. To 50 miles per hour, it is quicker. So they're all insanely quick and they have that torque immediately, which brings me to point number two. If you were to get into that combustion car, you'd be like, you know, why is there such a delay when I put my foot down and when I get the power, whether it's turbocharger providing lag or just the lag that's associated with the throttle regardless. There is so much delay in getting response, getting response out of an internal combustion engine versus an electric car. It really is a beautiful thing, a beautiful thing, how connected you are in an electric car to the throttle. I mean, it is a perfect match with your foot. Whatever position you give it, that's exactly what you get. In a combustion car, let's say it's turbocharged, you give it 50%, you've got 100% throttle. Why? I don't know, you ask for 50%, but for some reason you're getting 100%. It's because throttles aren't the best device for modulating uh, you know, power. There's, there's more power available much earlier on, and then as you open that throttle more, you don't notice as much of an impact. With an electric car, you ask for 50%, you get 50%. If you ask for 52%, you get exactly 52%. So it's a really special feeling and it's immediate. And what's so cool about that is just how connected you feel to the car as a result of it. Okay, our third complaint, let's hate a little bit more. Transmissions. What is the deal with transmissions? Imagine getting into a modern car. You've had a car that's never shifted ever before. And now when you put your foot down, not only do you have to wait for the engine to provide that torque but you have to wait for the transmission to shift to a lower gear and you're like what why am i spending all this time waiting around and why is the shift so clunky so that's another thing modern transmissions modern automatic transmissions are amazing thank you zf for finally perfecting the automatic transmission but the automatic transmission was invented nearly a hundred years ago and we're just now getting them to be actually good so people would have massive complaints about transmissions because the clunky shift there's a delay in getting your response from it and you could have a car that doesn't have that at all and then you just always have that power available there's no delays there's no clunky shifting number four Combustion engines are loud, and I'm not saying here that that is entirely a bad thing. I think the Shelby GT350 makes one of the best sounds human ears can actually listen to. I think it's phenomenal. I'm saying that people driving Toyota Camrys 
don't care what their car sounds like. They don't want to hear their engine, and they do, because internal combustion engines are loud. As much as we can try to make them quieter using mufflers and sound deadening all over the car, they are just loud things. And so eliminating that, getting into an electric car, it is wildly quiet. It is just amazingly quiet in comparison to an internal combustion engine vehicle. Number five, maintenance. If you told someone who had been driving electric cars the entire life what the maintenance schedule is on an internal combustion engine vehicle, there would be rioting in the streets. People would absolutely hate it. It is insane how much maintenance internal combustion engines require, especially as they age and you think about all the different systems that are all in that engine to make it work, whether it's EGR, you know, variable valve trains, the exhaust itself. Think about a diesel exhaust, just the exhaust, extremely complicated. Versus in an electric car, the maintenance schedule for this thing, uh, you know, you have to keep up with your brake fluid, so change the brake fluid as required, and every four years, you need to replace the coolant for the battery. That's about it. Two things that you really need to think about. And tires, obviously, you should think about your tires and rotate them around. Number six, switching from a combustion car. Hey, why do I have to keep touching the brake pedal? So a cool thing about electric cars is you have regen braking. So the electric motors actually slow the vehicle down. So you can do most of daily driving without ever touching that left pedal, the brake pedal. You can do most of your driving just using that right pedal and use your motors to slow your vehicle down. The added benefit of that is that your brake pads last longer because you rarely have to use them. So another maintenance point, and it's a driving convenience factor where you don't actually have to touch that brake pedal all that often. Number seven. Wait a minute, you're telling me I have to go to a gas station even when I'm just daily driving around town? Yes, this is something that as you start to live with an electric car, you get very used to. So I've had this thing for a year. I have a Subaru Crosstrek as well. And the cool thing about this car is every time I leave my house, it has a full battery. And so I never have to think about charging it ever unless I'm on a road trip. That's the only time around town I never have to think about it. Whereas I'll get my Crosstrek and, you know, I'm thinking, all right, I need to get somewhere. Uh, but, oh, crap look at my fuel gauge, I'm almost empty. Now I need to stop at a gas station before I go where I actually need to get. And yeah, it's a small inconvenience, uh, but w the world is full of small inconveniences that people simply profit off of. And so, you know, if we can change one of those things, meaning you never have to visit a gas station because your car is full every morning, I think that's great. And so it becomes something that you genuinely will care about. And you're like, whoa, I have to go to a gas station? How lame is this? Yes, gas stations have benefits. It makes road tripping way, way Way easier. Number eight, wait a minute, you're telling me when I get my car in the morning and it's cold outside, not only can I not start it up if it's sitting in my garage, uh, but I also have to wait for the engine to be warm in order for me to be warm. In an electric car, your car can be sitting in your garage, you get on your app, on your phone, and you turn up the heat, and so the car is nice and toasty when you get inside. And not only that, if you were to forget about doing that and you just got in your car, you get immediate heat because you're using resistive heat in order to create heat inside the cabin. So you get heat immediately, you don't have to wait for your engine to be warm. So it's a real beautiful benefit of the electric car that you can have that heat the second you get inside, even if the thing's parked in your garage and it's not going to be pumping your garage full of deadly fumes. On that same note, number nine, let's say you need to go inside and you're doing some shopping and maybe you've got some chocolate in your car that you don't want to melt or you've got a pet in the car that you want to stay alive. Well, you can keep the AC on and not leave your car running. So you go into the store, you leave the AC on, so your car's sitting there, it's keeping the interior cool, even if it's 110 degrees outside and it's sunny, the car's nice and cool, your pet's happy, your chocolate's happy, whatever it is you've got going on inside that you need to keep cool, it's going to remain cool, and you don't have the risk of, you know, hey, your engine's running and someone's going to get in your car and drive away with it or something like that. Number 10. Now, for number 10, I want to bring up the fact that points 1 through 9 do not mention the environment. I never mention the environment, and for some reason, being like, hey, I like uh, healthy air, or I like drinking water water that isn't toxic, uh, that's like a political thing. You don't say that because it's political, so you don't get into it. Uh, but also for some reason, marketing teams that try to market these electric cars are like, hey, you need an electric car because you need to save the water and the air and the environment. Even when they know that people are going to go crazy because talking about the environment gets political immediately and you alienate half of the population. So instead of taking the intelligent route when marketing electric cars and just being like, hey, here's all the reasons why they're better, instead the conversation shifts to hey, here's why they're better for the environment. People are like, yo, I don't care. I just want a sweet car. And that's exactly what this is. This is a very sweet car. Uh, and you don't have to worry about, you know, hey, am I being better for the environment or not? Uh, it's just genuinely a better car. Is it better for the environment than a gasoline car? Generally speaking, yes. 
Now, I'm certainly not here to say that electric cars are flawless. Combustion engines are very convenient for road trips, and if you don't have a place to charge at home, it's difficult to get by with an electric car and having to worry about going out and finding charging stations that are actually working. So we're gonna get into some of the major flaws of this car, but first I wanna talk about over the past year, some of the updates that have been provided and what those updates have done for me and what I think is cool about them, because it is actually very cool that this car continues to improve as as you own it. So I've owned it for a year, a little over a year, and during that time, twice, it's gotten a 5% power boost. So how cool is that? I paid nothing different and my car got quicker. So when I bought the car, zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds, now zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. So very cool because often with cars, what is the case is the new model is the latest and greatest and it's quicker and you're like, dang, I should have waited. But with Tesla, very often the older models actually get the benefits of the new updates. And so that's very cool. On top of this, they added sentry mode, which is really cool. So when the car is parked, it can record if someone's like, you know, messing with your car. It also has dash cam. So for the past 10 minutes, if you want, you just hit this button right here and it records the past 10 minutes of your driving. So if you get in an accident, you hit that button, you've got all the footage there saved. That's extremely useful. I feel like every car should have a feature like that. My favorite update that this car has gotten since I've owned it is the one pedal driving. So it will come to a complete stop now uh, versus when I bought it, it did not. It would slow down to about five miles per hour and then you had to use the brake pedal and make sure you held the brake pedal uh, up until a dead stop and then it could hold it for you. But now you can do all your driving with just the right pedal and you know in the emergency or if you just want to hold your foot on the pedal when you're at a stoplight, you can use that brake pedal. But most of your driving you can do without ever touching it, which is really cool. It's something the Nissan Leaf does really well. It's something the Chevy Bolt did really well, does really well, and now Tesla does it as well. So I'm excited that it offers that. I also like that they added Spotify. They didn't have Spotify previously. They had their own streaming service and now you can use Spotify right through the screen which is quite nice. All right so let's get ugly and talk about the things that I do not like. The first one you've probably already heard me complain about and that is the wheels. So when I bought this the only option for wheels were 20 inch wheels and they have a tiny little rubber band going around them and as a result I was in the car we ran over a pothole and two wheels were destroyed two tires were destroyed it was $2,700. Not very cool so now it is on some T-Sport line 18 inch wheels instead of 20 inch wheels thanks to T-Sport line for sending me these and they have some continental winter tires on them which have been great uh, so enjoying using those when it's been snowing around here and since there's a much meatier sidewall I'm now less concerned about getting a pothole so I like that about the tires and the wheels and it's nice that they can fit even with the performance brakes on this Model 3 Performance. My next gripe is visibility so out the front is fine to the left and right fine but when you look behind you the rear visibility is pretty terrible and yes there's a backup camera and yes there's blind spot monitoring system you can look on your screen but in my opinion to improve safety of a vehicle you should have good visibility in all directions and when you're checking your blind spot to your right it's very difficult to see if there's a car right over there and if you're looking behind you it's difficult to see behind you so yes there are cameras yes there's monitoring systems that can make it safe in my opinion uh, you should have better visibility than what this offers when looking out the back so rear visibility is pretty poor another thing to note there are emergency release handles for the front passenger in the event that you lose power in this thing and you need to get out of the car. So there's emergency release handles up front. There's not in the back. So let's say some poor situation occurs where you end up in an accident and you've got a car full of people, they all have to get out through the front doors. And I don't feel like I have to explain why that's kind of a dumb idea. You should be able to get out of the car regardless of which door you're sitting at. They should all have emergency release handles, and they do not. Only the front does. I think that's quite silly. Speaking of those rear passengers, one thing that's very noticeable is the sound system in this car is extremely good if you're sitting up front. If you're sitting in the back seats, it doesn't sound nearly as good. It's quite a dramatic difference sitting in the back seats versus the front, especially with the low end. The bass almost is completely gone when you sit in those back seats. And that's super strange. So it's a bummer that the car doesn't sound great regardless of where you're sitting. The audio system is very much so focused on the front passenger and driver. Moving on to exterior quality. Now you've already seen my video complaining about paint bubbles and dirt and stuff like that. Uh, that's not what I'm here to talk about. Two things that 
should have happened. The tow hook cover in the front, uh, I, I follow the instructions of how to remove it. You push your thumb, you put a little pressure on the top right side and pop that thing out. Well, it broke the plastic clips. So now I have a piece of tape holding my tow hook cover on because it's broken. That's quite silly that one time removing it and suddenly it's broken. The other thing is the carbon fiber rear spoiler. So the carbon fiber spoiler was installed after I bought the car uh, and unfortunately it is already coming off. So it hasn't been on the car for even a year and it is already coming off. And honestly, when it was installed the first time, there was a massive gap uh, between the spoiler and the car itself. And so I'm gonna have Tesla service actually come by and hopefully we can get this fixed and hopefully we can also reduce that gap. The car also does not have a heated steering wheel, and so for a car that's base price when I bought it was $67,000, I feel like it would be pretty cool if it had a heated steering wheel. Yes, it's a luxury, so it's not like cars need to have that, but a car at this price range, I feel like should have it. But you never know, maybe Tesla will release an over-the-air update uh, and have that heating steering wheel uh, as a software update. It's a joke, quit typing. A minor little gripe with the charging system, when you select what battery percentage you want to allow the car to charge up to, it doesn't actually let you choose a percentage. It just has a little sliding scale. So it'd be way more convenient if you could just choose, hey, 90% or 80% or put in the actual percent rather than just hoping this sliding scale gets to the number that you want. Because whenever I do it to try and get 80%, I'm usually at like 81 or at 79 and I can never get it on 80. And yes, that's a little OCD thing, but it just seems silly that it doesn't have an option to just go, hey, I want 80%. And my final gripe with this vehicle is that the warning system, the braking warning system is very overreactive. So you'll be coming up to traffic and it'll flash these red lights and say, beep, 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 beep. like, hey dude, stop. And you're like, yeah, I know there's traffic in front of me. Relax, I've driven before. The vehicle is very overreactive. So plenty of times in traffic, I find it yelling at me and I'm like, yeah, dude, I know. And I'm nowhere close to hitting anything and it's already yelling at me. So I feel like it could be too a little bit to be like hey if it's actually an emergency maybe then it should yell at me so that was a lot of bashing and there are plenty of things about this that aren't perfect but overall this is an insanely insanely good daily driver tesla is just so far ahead of the game in battery technology which is just wild to see you see all these companies coming out with new cars cars that are coming out after the tesla model 3 or after the tesla model s and they don't have the efficiency numbers that tesla has and they've been in this game for a while and so it's just like how are these new companies so far behind. So it's quite impressive to see how good Tesla is at batteries and their motor technology. The cars are technically just beautiful, beautiful machines. Uh, and I absolutely love driving this thing. I think it's super, super cool. So thank you all so much for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those below.